Mike, let me start with you just in terms of the market's reaction here. S&P just around the lows of the session. What do you make of the Fed decision and some of the language that has remained in this statement? Ongoing rate increases appropriate. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. And I think the way I think about the statement right now is it, it may be a touch hawkish, but largely in line with expectations. It wasn't my view that this was going to be the last rate hike. We've got another one penciled in for March and then one more final 25 basis point rate hike in May. So I think at least one more makes a lot of sense. And that's what was reflected in this statement. You know, taking a step back from the path of policy more broadly, I think this is really a bide their time meeting for the FOMC, where you know we've got two more CPI releases between now in the March meeting, two more employment releases. Obviously, March will also have an update to the dots and the economic projections, which today's meeting does not. And that's really, to me, when the rubber is going to meet the road for the Fed, when they need to decide, you know, will we hike one more time? Are we going to sit on hold for a while? What do we want to project for the rest of the year? You know, right now, I think this makes sense with the Fed that's, you know, feeling good about where the data is heading, but, you know, they don't by any means feel that it's mission accomplished yet. All right, Kathy, let's get your reaction to the announcement. And this is what we do. We overanalyze language. So ongoing increases. Does that suggest to you there are two more after this 25 point hike? I think that's likely. Um, I think the Fed's made it pretty clear that their target for the peak Fed funds rate is probably five to five and a quarter percent. And that probably will come in 25 basis point increments between now and the spring, unless something changes pretty drastically. I think that that's what they've been signaling pretty clearly. Any hopes that they might be somewhat more dovish, I think were probably unrealistic at this meeting. Uh, a lot depends, um, you know, as things go forward. But I, I think that this was largely as expected and largely in line with what the, the guidance has been so from the Fed. Kathy, though, the case, though, for holding rates higher by the Fed, is that case becoming less compelling to you, given the recent data that we've gotten? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the Fed has talked about, you know, hike and hold and then recalibrate. Uh, what we're seeing is a lot of information suggesting that in, indeed inflation's coming down, that some of the things that they really worried about uh, accelerating or not accelerating, actually moving in the other direction. So I think had it not been for the Fed being so far behind the eight ball in terms of starting this cycle, they probably wouldn't have to raise rates as much as they're planning to, uh, because we are starting to see uh, wage gains slow down. We're starting to see uh, manufacturing is still very soft with input prices declining and output prices declining, new orders declining. We're seeing some cooling off in consumer spending. And, uh, and certainly in the global markets, we're starting to see you know some of the things that were worrying the Fed and other central banks like high energy prices have, have gone in the other direction. So uh, there's plenty of compelling reasons for the Fed to slow down at this stage of the game and even probably could build a case for stopping. But they have signaled so clearly that <clears throat> their goal is to get to this five, five and a quarter percent and hold it there for a while. If they back off, uh, that's probably going to be a signal that they you know, are easy on inflation. And that's not the signal they want to send. Of course, that pivotal Friday jobs number might could change everything. And how do you think this morning may have jolted, if you will, pun very much intended, the Fed, 11 million job openings? Yeah, I mean, it's certainly going the wrong direction, but I, I wouldn't put too much emphasis on the headline openings for a couple reasons. First, when you dug under the headline of that, a lot of it was concentrated in a few industries, which maybe suggests some seasonal quirks or some other issues. So it was retail trade, leisure and hospitality, construction. You know, it wasn't necessarily a very broad based increase in job openings across the economy. And you also saw quits edge down, which was another sign that I think was more consistent with some gradual labor market cooling. So, you know, the headline wasn't necessarily super consistent with other labor market indicators of demand. It wasn't consistent with the ECI report we got yesterday. You know, obviously, we'll see what employment report on, on Friday holds. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's not necessarily what the Fed's looking for at this point in time is even higher openings coming off a high base. Kathy, let's take a look at the bond market's reaction. We're still off just about six basis points, not too far from three, five. But I'm pointing this out because in four of the last five Fed rate decisions, the first move in the 10 year was actually reversed within the next half hour once Powell started speaking. Do you expect that to happen again? 
Well, I think it's a risk. Um, I actually think it's more of a risk at the short end or the intermediate part of the curve because that's where the market is not priced for the Fed to hit that five, five and a quarter uh, peak rate. So when you look at where two and three year yields are priced right now, um, they'd have to you know, really come down pretty quickly uh, in order to meet those expectations. So I think if there's a repricing in the market, it's more at the short end than it is at the long end, which really is going to reflect the expectation for slower growth and inflation. And we have this steeply inverted yield curve. The more the Fed ratchets up the tightening at this stage of the game, when there's already <laughs> evidence of slowing inflation, probably the deeper that inversion is going to be. So for 10-year yields, probably bounce around this 3.5% area. We'll wait and see what the, the data are in uh, on Friday for the job market. That's probably going to be more of a driver of bond yields than what uh, what happens today. And Mike, what are you in particular going to be listening for when Jerome Powell starts talking in, in about 20 minutes? I think what I'll just be listening for is, does he push back on anything in terms of how the market's positioned right now? It's not my base case, sort of like I already said. I think I think this meeting is more about biding time, you know, trying to get a little more data before going into that important March meeting. But I, I mean, there's always a risk that the Fed views things differently, right? And so you still have just almost some event risk going into the press conference of maybe the Fed sees this differently and they really want to push back on market pricing for you know interest rates like like Kathy was just discussing, or maybe the rally we've seen in risk assets. You know, so that's really, I think, what would catch my ear is if the Fed is thinking about this a lot differently than the market is right now. Whereas I think what's more likely is you'll just get a Fed that, that tries to punt to some extent going one way or the other on financial conditions.